So I thought we'd do a quick video on text and vector graphics inside ZBrush and how you can use them. You'll see underneath the Z plugin menu here we have a text 3D and vector shapes roll up. So I'm just going to open this up here by double clicking on these two little arrows here and take my Z plugin and dock it over here so we can play with this and I'll open up the text 3D and vector shapes. We can start off with text by just putting in new text and hitting enter. And that will actually create the text, but it won't actually draw it onto the surface. So you'd have to click and drag it out. And then once you've done that, press T to go into edit mode or hit this button. So this is the text and you can see it's a little bit low in resolution. It's quite blocky in places here. So we can go into this here and we can change the resolution by increasing this. And you'll see as we do that, we're going to get more faces in this area here. I'm going to press shift F so we can actually see what's going on here. As we increase this more and more, you can see we're getting more and more faces in that area here. If you want to add a bevel to your text, you can just change that by adding on a bevel here. You can see that this has just created this new bevel here. And we can increase the size of that, or the, the width of that to whatever we like. And if you want to add a little bit of curvature to that, you're going to have to add a little bit of bevel resolution. So once you've added a few loops to this, you can now introduce curvature. That's just gonna put a bit of a bend on this. So it's a bit of a softer, a softer rotation. And obviously the higher the resolution, the better the bevel is, or the smoother it's going to be. And we can increase that curvature even more. So depending on the look you're going for, you can get nice soft text like this. If you don't like the font, you can just cycle through them here. This will go through the fonts. And it will just automatically reply as long as this auto update is turned on. So as we go through this font, you'll see these are just getting automatically applied. Now some of them, the bevel might be uh, too strong for what the, for the, the original font. So we can just play with this or you can click on this and then load a font yourself by just clicking on it and then that will load that font. So if you want to edit this text, you can just hit edit and say, this is my old text, hit enter again and that will update the text. And then you can save this if you want as a preset. So what that's going to save is all of these details down here which you can then load and place on other text later on. This text tool also allows you to go with vertical on your text. If you want it this way, uh, I'll turn that off. If you want to put it in reverse, which can be good if you're making a mold for something and you want to have the text in reverse, for example. And the auto update here we can turn off, so that will allow us to play with these settings until we're ready to go and then we can turn it on and then it will update using those settings. So that's pretty much the text. You can also load a font file from disk if you have a font that you haven't yet installed. So ZBrush can also do scalable vector graphics or SVG files. And if you want to do that, you can just hit type new SVG and that will ask you to browse to your file. So we need one first, obviously. I've just gone into Google here and I've typed in free SVG decorations. And here you can see, I'll take the first link that we have here. This site I've put in the description. It would be great if other people could put in really cool sites that they know as well. What's really good about this one, for example, is that all of these are released under the Creative Commons license, which means that they're free to use even for commercial use. So if something is in the public domain, or if you have a website with a lot of SVGs that are in the public domain or use the Creative Commons license, please do put it as a comment in the description. That would be really useful for everyone else. So from here, you can see that there are all kinds of different uh, thicknesses and quality, and, and some of them are quite delicate and others are less so. So you can just download one by just clicking on the SVG button and then that will bring it down. So I've already taken a few. So in order to load them in, I'll just go to new SVG. I'll browse to the first one and hit open. When you first load it, it's not actually gonna put it on again. We have to draw it onto the canvas and enter T to enter edit mode. And you can see that this is now loaded in. If you want, you can introduce bevels and that can be as subtle or as uh, strong as you like. And you may find that you're not getting enough resolution. So for certain files, for example, if I hit new SVG, we only have one sub tool at the moment. When I hit new SVG, it will create a new sub tool and load that in there. Some of these can take a really long time to load, however, just especially if they're very complex. The resolution is set quite low here, but if you increase that resolution quite a lot, then it's gonna take a lot longer to load. But you may have to do that to get the quality that you're looking for. 
So as you can see here, this one took quite a long time to load and by the time it came in, um, the bevel would have slowed it down as well, but the resolution still isn't actually high enough. So I'd have to take that bevel off. I should have turned off auto update to modify both of these at the same time, but you know, you live and learn. So that actually took a good seven or eight minutes to even update that. So it can be quite slow, but it, it will get there in the end. So it's worth waiting around for it. So here you can see a few that I've actually downloaded and I put in using the maximum resolution. So you can see that the, the quality of these is actually really good. Um, we can even get really fine line detail like this embroidery pattern here or this particular one here. Really, really fine detail. So once you have these, you can do you can do whatever you like with them now. You can dynamash them, start creating sculpts on them. Um, you could even append maybe a cube on this. Uh, drag that up to the top. And let's actually take that cube and then scale it and make it fit um, the stuff that we have here, for example. I'll just push this in. You make it like we can make our own little card here or something like that. If we want, we can turn on the little Boolean arrow here. Uh, we can turn all of these to negative, so they'll be cut out of it. And if we turn on live Boolean, you'll see that these will now be cut out of this shape. So you can do some some nice stuff with these, uh, and if you want to bring it into something like key shot is going to be slightly different because if you try and render this now if you go to your external render if you have key shot bought and you hit key shot as soon as you do it will just turn off live boolean because key shot doesn't understand live boolean so in order for this to get into key shot you would have to turn on live boolean go down to boolean here hit make boolean mesh that may give you an error it may not but um generally it's okay this is what it has given me here so from here now what you can see i can turn off live boolean Turn on render, hit key shot, and everything's going to be okay. We still have this. So from here, we just hit render, and then that will send that to key shot. So here it is in key shot, and you can see you can apply your own materials to this. Um, if you want to make it, I don't know, like glass or something like that. If you're making a trophy for something, um, you can do that. And uh, yeah, basically play with it with the materials and the lighting and the settings inside Keyshot. But you can get some really nice effects using SVG graphics. Either create your own, download free ones, and just using something like Live Boolean would be enough to get you these really nice results. So yeah, if you know any other website that gives away free SVG files using the Creative Commons license or leaves them in the public domain or lists files from the public domain, feel free to leave a comment with the link and maybe somebody else will get some use out of it. As usual, don't forget to click like and subscribe if you like this kind of content and hopefully I'll make some more. Alright, cheers, bye.